Hi guys, how's it going? I'm Mariana and today I'll talk about a book titled And Then, Five Films of Five Architectures by Hideyuki Nakayama, published by Toto. I'll focus on one film and uh, one architecture. Hideyuki Nakayama is a Japanese architect based in Tokyo. He worked at Toyoito and Associates between 2000 and 2007 and in 2007 he established his own practice. The book is a collection of five booklets compiled to illustrate five films by five different directors produced uh, for an exhibition on uh, Hideyuki Nakayama's work uh, titled And Then at Toto Gallery in Tokyo in 2019. The films depict the flow of time and then what has happened and is happening in five buildings designed by the Japanese architect. House and Road was directed by Sai Sakaguchi and uh, Junko Nakayama. The house was designed between December 2010 and October 2012, and it was completed in June 2013. It's a small site of 105 square meters. The building area is 39.6 square meters, and the total floor area is 60 square meters. There's two floors above ground and one floor below ground. When I met the clients, they were renting two units in the same apartment building. One was for their daily life and the other was for their hobby, which was painting. They had covered the rented room entirely with uh, transparent vinyl sheets in order to avoid messing up the walls and the floor. When they asked me to design the house, I thought it would naturally make sense to place a vinyl covered room and a room uh, for daily life in the same way on the site. The rooms maintain the same relationship as in the apartment building. They would go back and forth between two different houses in the same way. I ended up using glass instead of vinyl and separating the living and the atelier into two buildings to allow them to have uh, two different lives. The distance between the two buildings is very important. The middle of the site has an asphalt finish the same as the street around it. When the doors close, the shape of a house appears. When people paint, sometimes they need to take a look at their own work from a distance. In this architecture, you can see into the atelier from the living space. Literally, you can look at your own work from the opposite side of the road. Short pitched corrugated fiber cement slate boards and short pitched corrugated fiber glass were used as exterior finishes. The two buildings are sometimes perceived as a pair standing side by side and other times as a continuous body. The frame of the big door is built out of steel square pipes and finished with short pitch corrugated fiber cement slate board. The 2 by 5 meter door weights 400 kilos and is fixed directly onto the building using stainless steel door hinges. Because the maximum wind load on the door is expected to be nearly one ton, the flash bolt, uh, door bolt and door stop in addition to the door hinges were custom designed and custom made. A user manual for the door was also provided to the clients. The big door when opened overlaps with the gable side facade of the building. A single outline of the facade is broken and a road emerges between the two buildings. Due to the compact floor plan with uh, structural members exposed inside, wood frame construction was selected to protect the house against the extreme temperatures and also to facilitate atelier activities such as nailing. Some changes were made later on. The couple no longer inhabits the house that is now owned by a family of three. They installed a letterpress printing machine and the atelier is currently used as a workshop. I visited this strange house for the first time after joining Hideyuki Nakayama Architects. Five years later, when I returned to Japan after studying abroad in the Netherlands, Hideyuki offered me the opportunity to make a film for his upcoming exhibition. The film is shot in one long take simultaneously with four cameras. In order to capture spontaneous interactions among the three family members, I indicated only which route each of them should take in the scenario and left the rest up to them. I aimed at creating a film in which the characters come in and out of the frame while stitching together different spaces that cannot be grasped in a single image. 
an overall picture gradually emerges as viewers move through different scenes uh, one by one. Flows and sounds in the city which cannot be choreographed in advance were captured on the spot by the cameras and incorporated into the story. As soon as the big doors open and let the outside world flow inside, things on the street emerge and let us know that the here and the everywhere else are connected in ambiguous ways. A printing machine emitting rhythmic sounds, a person trotting down the stairs, big gates slowly opening, buses and delivery trucks coming and going on the street, and a quiet atelier where subtle sounds of water are heard behind the curtains. We played with the keyboards, made some melodies inspired by the movement of people, things and spaces unexpectedly captured by the lens, exchanged sound sources and gradually created the music. When everything came together, sounds from the house and the city were overlaid with four layers of piano sounds to create a small symphony. There are four fixed cameras. A camera looking out the window toward the road, a camera looking through the window in the adjacent house toward uh, the same road, a camera peeking from inside the house into the adjacent house across the road, a camera directed toward the road. There are four people, a person making artwork in the atelier, a person refreshing herself in the bathroom, a child playing around and a delivery man. The object is particularly interesting. It was designed by Idea Osida and uh, printed in different color papers, both coated and uncoated, and is kept together by a transparent uh, vinyl uh, dust jacket. Take a look at the book at your local bookstore, come by Spazio if you are in Milan. Thank you very much for watching this video and see you in the next one. Bye!